Hi folks, uh, my name's Bruno, good friend of Jack's. I've done the Welsh Rabbit before and a couple of other things and um, I'm here today with Bob Jacko, Jacko, Bob Jacko Productions and it's Cooking with the Blues and uh, Jack has just popped out and I'm going to show you how to make a victorious sandwich and it's called that because it's two layers of um, sponge, they call it that. It's actually a Victoria cake where you can either put pastry cream inside or whipped cream. And this was made during the era of Queen Victoria, this time, where people used to come round and have uh, tea and biscuits and then the women used to make a cake or tea and whatever. And it became a focal point for them to get together and have a chit chat. And then it, it was extended to the other restaurants and then that's why you have tea and high tea now in England. Tea time in the working class part of England, if you can still call it that, is where you have a hot meal. That's your tea. And the sophisticated people, or so-called sophisticated people, call it dinner. Breakfast, lunch and dinner, as you get. But people who have tea, I'm going home for my tea now, means they could be going home for pork chops or whatever, you know, um, meatloaf. And then we have tea, which is the ritual that you have in the Ritz hotels and Four Seasons and many, many little tea rooms all over England and especially in America. Right, for this recipe, it's um, pretty uh, pretty straightforward and very easy. You need a couple of nine inch pans, sandwich pans or sponge cake pans, lined with paper. I'm going to show you how I did that in a minute. You need 200 grams of unsalted butter, soft, 200 grams of fine sugar and 200 grams of sifted flour. You also need a teaspoon of baking powder, four eggs beaten, and that's basically it. Now what I'm going to do is quickly show you over here, Bob, is how I did the pan. You just take some greaseproof paper, pencil around the bottom of a well-buttered dish or pan, well-buttered pan, and then just cut round the paper. I mean I'm wasting this paper, I shouldn't be, but I'm doing it for convenience at the moment. If you can you can you can you can squeeze two rings out of here. I'm not doing that. Um, I'm sure Jack will tell me I'm lazy later for not saving the paper. So once you cut round there, there we go. And that lays in the bottom of the thing. This is this is great because when the sponge when the sponge has risen, you can this will come out nice and easy. This piece of paper will be stuck to the bottom of the sponge, and while it's still warm, lightly peel it off. If you wait till it gets cold, you might pull it and tear the sponge. You don't want to do that. We go over to the KitchenAid, great implement we use here all the time for a piece of kitchen equipment. Always make sure that your bowl is nice and clean sometimes and also preferably if you've got two of these it's nice to keep one in the fridge or in the freezer all the time then when you take it out it's nice and chilled as this one is and you place that in there and I'll plug in obviously I've preheated the oven to about um, 350 uh, which is probably gas mark 4 I would think if you're doing that on English terms or that's how you're doing Add the butter slowly and you'll cream that. You can't just have butter in. Then you're going to beat that for a few minutes and um, I'll be showing you the inside of the machine there. So she's here. You have to be very careful and make sure the butter is nice and not runny. And it's soft. If not, when you put your ingredients in, the flour and the sugar, you'll get little pea lumps. This will not be any good, and then you'll find that throughout the texture throughout the sponge. Now I've beaten this pretty vigorously. Like all things, you, know, you don't know the beat it, so. I'm now going to add the sugar, 200 grams. Turn this down so I don't get smothered in it. I 
I've now added the sugar, and that is creaming up nicely. Uh, Bob just brought up a good point to me. Um, I'm talking in grams, etc. And that is about um, half a pound is what I use. If you go to um, Target or any like baking William Sonoma, they will give you uh, a cup or mug like this, and it gives you all the breakdowns of the of what is written on the side, and also give you a little chart so you can, you know, it's handy to have that because I and then when I, I go back to England quite often, when I go back there, it all flips over again for me. So it's it's um it's a bit of a pain having to try and remember all this. It's, it's, it's ideal actually. If you do a lot of baking, is to make a chart up yourself so you can do it, what the gas mark is, and have that, and then you can just look quick. Now, I'm going to let that do that. I'm just going to get myself a spatula. Okay, now I'm going to scrape down this, and then I'm going to add the flour. It's really nice and creamy. Look, as you can see, there's no lumps in there. That's the ideal with that, so... Some deals, when you make, when I'm making my uh, apple pie crust, the butter has to be cold. It's a different, different thing altogether. Now I take the 200 grams of that. This is self-raising in England, so I'm also adding um, a little bit of baking powder, and you can also add um, a little bit of soda. But it's just, this will, this will be cold. But it'll rise enough with the eggs going in. So slowly add half of that, and then beat it slowly. And then half of the four beaten eggs. If the eggs are small, Go with five, as I did. Sometimes you get real nice, large, organic or free-range eggs, but if you're buying them cheaply in the supermarket, I'd go with five. It won't hurt. My grandma always used to say, another egg's not going to kill it. It's only going to taste better and make it rise better. So. Kind of a sloppy sound, but that's cool. Whack it up. 